Once your blood runs orange and blue, orange and blue. 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 this, this is, the pod, is the pod for you. For you. You're listening to Orange and Blue Bloods, hosted by EJ Stewart and Tommy Beer. Let's get to it, New York. They take their talents to South Beach, Game 6 in Miami, Friday. The Mets, no, excuse me, the Heat, I don't know why it's the Mets. <laughs> the Heat have not lost a game at home since the playoffs have started. The Knicks are trying to come back from a 3-1 deficit to win that series for the first time in franchise history. The Knicks have never come back from being down uh, a 3-1. Well, I guess they did once, I guess. So uh, I guess, I guess uh, when, they, when they when they beat the Pacers. But besides that, uh, second time, I think they, they've never done this. Um, so they never – well, there's a stat that they never did. I don't know why I wrote that down. There's something in this series they never did. I don't know if they were down 0-2 or whatever, but either way. Um, Knicks trying to come back from being down 3-1, which has not happened very often. Very few teams have done it. So uh, what ex- what adjustments do you think that you would uh, expect to see the, the Heat make now that you've seen the Knicks get a W? And like I said, I think you're seeing the Knicks maybe start to figure this Heat offense out, a defense out a little bit. Yeah, if I'm Miami, I'm making someone other than Jalen Brunson beat me. Um, you know, I, I, if that's, you know, Barrett or Randall, um, I'd much rather take my chances in, 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 in the next season coming down to the hands of, of Julius Randall. Um, you know, f- they, they, they've really taken heart out of the series by daring him to shoot three pointers. Um, I suspect they'll do the same uh, and try to continue to do the same with, with RJ Barrett as well. Um, that may leave some open opportunities for Quinn Grimes. And the other thing that the heat have going in their favor is Brunson's, you know, and, and Grimes will probably running on fumes a little bit um, after playing 48 minutes, 48 hard minutes in a, in an elimination game at the garden. Um, so yeah, I expect them to kind of run at those guys in waves, use their depth advantage um, and do the things that they were successful for them last time out hustle, uh, you know, tr- try to win the, the battle of the boards, force turnovers, um, you know, don't let the Knicks get easy buckets in transition. Um, so, the, the, you know, those are the type of things that, that, that I assume Miami will look to look to uh, accomplish in, in game six. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely agree with that. And by the way, Knicks are, they have never come back from 3-1. I don't know why. I, I didn't trust my own notes and my own facts there. But, but um, yeah, I think from the Heat's perspective, I don't I, – it, it's always interesting when you get to game six and game seven because now the adjustments kind of become a little tough to kind of see what you're going to do because now we've kind of seen everything from these coaches. Now a lot of it comes down to, like, you know, how these guys play. And it's really more maybe in-game adjustments as opposed to, like, Adjustments coming into a game. Now, Eric Spolstra, uh, he's got, you know, he's got uh, so much in his bag that it wins probably he has something he can come to or, or come up with, come into this game. But, I mean, they they picked up Brunson full court. They were blitzing those screens last night. I thought Brunson did a good job in the fourth quarter because the Knicks kept putting Duncan Robinson in action and the Heat tried to combat that by essentially just doubling him, just sending. And Brunson kept running hard around Duncan Robinson to – create space to essentially get the Knicks offense going and kind of force a mismatch or force, uh, you know, a, basically a, a four on three on the weak side. Like, I, I I don't know really how they can adjust that. I mean, Duncan Robinson is shooting the ball really well. He's got to keep playing. So he's going to be out there and they're going to keep playing those coverages, how they're playing them. I do wonder if the Heat find a way to, they might have, they, they, they got to get this game back in the half court. I think that that was probably one of the things that hurt them in this one. Like the Heat are not necessarily a running team. Now they got some leak outs in the games three and four in Miami that, that that helped them out, but they're not really a running team and they got some turnovers, but I think the Knicks being able to change that pace in the second quarter got the Heat playing an uncomfortable pace. So I think that maybe you'll see them try to, try to, try to, uh, try to maybe keep the Knicks back in the half court. I also think they're going to have to play through Jimmy Moore. I don't expect that these guys who were shooting the ball so well to continue to keep shooting the ball that well. Like Jimmy Butler's played great, but he hasn't had a super Jimmy game yet. I am worried that like game six feels like the game where he has that game and they kind of need him to have that game. I think a lot of these guys came back to earth. Like Gabe Vincent and Caleb Martin, like these guys are not knockdown shooters. Like that's not – their game, they're good shooters, they're decent shooters, but these are the guys that you live with taking shots. And um, those guys started to see some misses, especially uh, Vincent, who I, I didn't think shoot the shot the ball well all last night. I think they're gonna have to lean on their start. I think you're gonna have to see a bigger game from Bam. I think you're gonna have to see a bigger game from Jimmy Bruns, Jimmy uh, Butler. And I think you'll see maybe Spo early in the game really try to, you know, force feed Butler, like they kind of how they did in game three when Butler was coming back from the injury. He only had 12 field goal attempts last night. Yeah. Uh, 
I was stunned at how little of a kind of an impact. Listen, he, you know, what did he finish? He finished with uh, 19, 9, and 7, which is a good game. You know, it was a solid Not that game. game, but yeah. But this for Jimmy, but you know, for Jimmy Buckets and the play, the best player in the playoffs, you know, the, the talk was um, for him to only take nine field goal attempts uh, in a crucial closeout game was shocking. Remember, um, you know, in, in the uh, against Milwaukee, the, the, the first five games of the postseason, he averaged 38 points on 24 field goal attempts. Right. Um, and, and he was doing much of that, you know, prior to the ankle sprain um, in game one. So there's, there's, you know, I, I expect them to, to go at him, you know, really run the offense through him full throttle and make no mistake. The heat will approach us like a game seven. They don't, they want, yeah, they have to, they, they have to, they want no part of, can they win a game seven? Absolutely. You know, there's a yeah. tough team, yeah. Jimmy Butler, you know, veterans, Spo, all that stuff. Like if they, if the Knicks get to a game seven, I expect them to be a close game. Um, you know, fourth quarter, yada, yada, yada. Um, that said, the Heat will treat this like a game seven. Um, I would, you know, I, I think we can assume Butler's going to play 45 minutes, 45 plus minutes. Um, yeah, he said he'll play however many minutes Spo wants him to play, which I think, 100%. Was the, which I think was the message to say, hey, don't take me out in this next game. <laughs> yep. Yep. And if the, you know, and listen, you know, the, obviously Vincent's going to have to, you know, from a Nick adjustment standpoint, I'd much rather the Knicks put Brunson on Vincent as opposed yes. to chasing Duncan Robinson around screens. Again, it's like 48 minutes dribbling against 94 feet of pressure. Don't have him also chase Duncan Robinson, who led the team in field goal attempts 13 last night, um, run through screens. And, the, the Heat just make it so hard to hide. Yes. They uh, hide anybody on yeah. those quote unquote, like non attackers, like, you know, Struess and Robinson, they run so much of an action through those guys. You think, how do you run your actors through guys who are role players? But they run so much off-ball action with those guys that, like, it's not a break to guard Max Struess or Duffy right. Robinson. Right. And, and they, they, you can't rest on those guys. Like, those guys will kill you. So I don't – I agree. I, I hate every time Brunson's matched up with those guys. Struess didn't play well last night, but Robinson did. Yeah, just let just do what they did against Cleveland. Like they yeah. put Brunson on Garland of all people, Darius Garland, who's an right. all star caliber guard, was an all star the previous season, and like the it, the world didn't blow up. Everything was fine. The Knicks won that series fairly easily. Like just let him guard his matchup. Right, and and again, a lot of it's gonna what what number thirty shows up. Is it the oh, second yeah. half Julius Randle? Is it the regular season Julius Randle? Is it the first quarter Julius Randle? First play of the game back door just his head in space and kevin love gets a back door uncontested layup in a half court set on the first possession of the game i mean it was literally i i couldn't believe it um when he went down with that elbow i thought like is he i didn't see him get hit you know you just saw him kind of on the floor in the baseline i'm like is he going to take himself out of the game just because he's not either mentally or physically not feeling well or just, it was just bizarre to see um, it was almost as if he had heard the the the, the disrespect uh, and the, and the, and the criticism of him after games three and four, and said like I'm not going to try harder. Like you guys can't make me compete or play defense if I don't want. You know, almost like a petulant child. Um, yeah. Just a, a shocking. You know, I, I, the the most enigmatic figure I, I've ever covered. Um, you know I, that I've seen in a Knicks uniform really as an athlete in New York and in a long time. Um, so I, I don't I don't know what to predict going forward, but I know that the Knicks are going to need him if they're going to win the series. Um, Brunson can't do them all by himself. They're likely going to be without Emmanuel quickly again. Um, they're starting back court played each played 48 minutes heart hasn't given him much um barrett oh, can yeah. have that's got to change but heart's got to have a big game i understand that was he, that, he had an awful game yesterday i mean he was he was like non-playable it, non-playable because again that the, the, the heat have really sapped and neutralized him um by preventing his forays into the paint and his transition buckets which makes him basically a perimeter shooter which is what he can't succeed at um uh, but he needs to find ways to contribute by by hook or by crook and i think yeah. he will i think he'll have a strong bounce back game um and i also would like to see the knicks get more feature grimes more offensively i know he's had the turnovers i know he hasn't knocked down that many shots and even when he hasn't knocked down shots his spacing has still been valuable it's the reason he played 40 minutes but i would like to feed him um you know especially early get him some open looks points are going to be at a premium they're going to need him to make some shots make some three pointers um so that's what i'd like to see uh, early first quarter yeah, those two threes he hit in the first half, and those are the only two threes he made. I mean, I they were like immense. Like it felt like when he hit those threes, because one in the first quarter when they couldn't buy a basket, then they had one to start the second quarter. Like the Knicks offense was searching. Like there was it didn't seem like anybody had it going. It looked like this could be a long night at Mass Square Garden into a long offseason. Yep. And he hit those two big shots. And while he didn't hit 
uh, any more threes going forward in that game. I thought it did kind of loosen up the Heat defense a little bit. And I think it made them say, okay, you know, this is not a guy we can leave. Because he, he hit those shots, like, with hands in his face. It wasn't yeah. like these were wide open threes. So now he hits those shots. I think when he does get the wide open ones that he was missing, like, those clothes are a lot more aggressive. Those guys are now scrambling a lot harder at that guy as opposed to Josh Hart when he's getting the ball. They're kind of stunting, kind of saying, I hope you shoot this ball, and kind of Jedi mind-tricking him into shooting it or maybe not shooting it, which has been the whole problem with him. Sometimes he's not taking shots that are wide open that he actually has to take. Grimes, he, he I agree. I think that not only was he immense in this game, in game five, I think that he's got to take more threes in uh, in game six. I think that if you're looking for a guy to have that game six John Starks in Indiana in 94, I think Grimes is the guy I'm looking at. Like He's the guy that has to hit four or five threes, you know, maybe ending up with 18, 20 points and him being the difference. I think that that's the one thing, if I'm saying one thing that didn't happen in this game, that I think does need to happen for the Knicks to win in game six is they got to get something big from someone else besides Randall Brunson and Barrett. Like, Nick scored- first of all, I don't know what I'm going to get from Randall. So I, I'm, I'm not convinced I'm going to get another 24 point game from him. Uh, I think Barrett and Brunson will play good. How good I think will depend on just how much they're up for the moment. But they're going to need somebody else, a top in, a Grimes, uh, a Mitchell Robinson, a Josh Hart. Somebody has to give them another double-digit performance, a, a 15, 20-point performance to help the Knicks get this one. 100%. Knicks scored 34 points in the third quarter. Br- uh, Brunson, Randall, and Barrett had all 34 points. You know, that, yeah. that's that's the type of thing where you – know, Two you games can't... in a row where they've had all the game, all the points. So that's that. That's something that you, you can't rely on going forward. The Knicks really need their their depth to to step in and step up. Yeah, and this is that's unfortunate because you feel like, man, if quickly <laughs> was available and playing the way he normally plays, like this would feel like okay, maybe yes. he's the guy that can get you going here. Like the one thing about that win that was encouraging was it felt a lot like kind of how the Knicks beat the Heat during the regular season. Like that looked like as much of a regular season game as we've seen from the Knicks really in this postseason. They've shot the three ball really well, 38%, 13 makes. Like, you'll take that. 49% from the field. They dominate the glass. Like, this looked like a regular season Knicks win. So if the Knicks have kind of maybe found themselves a little bit in game five, you hope that maybe going on the road, something that they've done exceptionally well, not just in the postseason, but also in the regular season, that maybe they could find that, that, that mojo there. And I think another – they didn't get a good start in this game five is something yes. that we pointed out. I think it, they can't survive a bad start in Miami. You can't go down 10 points. You can't score 14 points in the first quarter. Like they're going to have to have a really good first quarter. Uh, if they're going to win. The one un Nicky on Nick's like thing from the regular season. They did. They, they committed 19 turnovers in, in game five. Yeah. Way too many turnovers. They need to clean that up. That'll give them a better chance to win game six. Assuming Brunson comes back down to earth a little bit and, you know, and, and you're factoring some kind of regression to the mean from their big three. And, I mean, Brunson may have to play another 48. Yep. And I know this may sound kind of crazy, but if if you do want to give him a blow, they may need to play some minutes with Randall playing point forward, even if it's five minutes. Like, they, there, there are ways they could they could finagle this to where I don't think they'll get killed. Um, because, But it, it, you got to play with, with whatever the game requires. Like, to me, I don't know if Tibbs came in saying I'm playing him 48 minutes. Right. I think that the way the game went Agreed. was very clear. They're down yeah. 10. Then Brunson is going in the yep. second quarter, and it was very clear that the only way they're going to stay in this game is if Brunson is out there. So yep. he played him 48. Like they, they, could... they, like they scored 14 points in the first quarter. Like Tibbs didn't really have a choice. I mean, if, if right. you put me right in there for a couple of minutes, you you know, you, then you're down. Yeah, this game gets down 15, 20, and now the season's over. So, yeah, he kind of just played the the series, the game as he, it was. He treated, so. it like a game, he treated it like a game seven, which he should have. Which is exactly, absolutely what he had to do. So, all right, million-dollar question. Do the Knicks force a game seven? Uh, listen, I picked the Knicks and seven come into the series. Um, I'll That's stick right. with that. Um, you know, obviously they're going to have to earn it. It's hard to be overly optimistic g- given how, how, how poorly they performed their last two games in, uh, in Miami. But again, this is not a unbeatable team. Um, this is a team that's a little bit over reliant on three point shooters. Um, I think the Knicks will flop a little bit early first quarter on some BAM screens. Um, yep. I'm sure that the that the league office is being inundated with film 
Um, I think Brunson should try to do that. I think, you know, who, who's ever in the game, try to get some early fouls on Bam, try to get some early fouls. Uh, you know, when Zeller's in the game, get in the bonus, make your free throws, um, and then just have it, you know, be, be within striking distance at the start of the fourth quarter and then hand the ball to Brunson and say, you know, you, you've proven you're one of the – elite players in the sport in the crunch time in postseason um deliver yeah. us to a game seven and i, I like their chances if, if in if in fact they can get to that point um, no means guaranteed the, the other team has this guy jimmy butler who's pretty good in big moments as well um but should be fun and you know that's uh, why they play the game that is why they play i i must say they do it as well i mean i, I said that they would win game five i had the nixon seven as well i uh, did not feel very confident about game five and now they got game five I and mean, kind of the way they got it like right. I think getting it in a gut check, um, the offense is looking a lot more smoother. And to me, like they kind of found something in that second half in Miami game four. Like if to me, if I was Tom Thibodeau, I wouldn't wouldn't show much of Randall's film, but I would show a lot of like the second half of game four, particularly Randall and Barrett. Like they they were scoring. Like they shot like seventy percent in the third quarter in that game. Whatever they shot, it was something crazy. Like they, I I think they may have cracked this defense a little bit. Now they have to make shots. Like you have to give right. yourself a chance. Right. But like. I don't. I I thought in, in game three they looked lost offensively, where it looked like they they kind of didn't know kind of how to kind of figure out what he were doing. I think now they kind of have a lot more comfort with what they're trying to do offensively. I think we saw that from pretty much the second quarter on in game five. So I think the Knicks play a pretty good offensive game, and I think the pressure now lies on the Heat. Like they know they can't go back to New York, or at least they don't want to. So right. I I think the Knicks do force a game seven. I I really do. I, game seven at the Garden Monday night. That's gonna be. That idea, zoo. I'm, I'm hoping we get it, um, for better or for worse. It could be heartbreak, but it, it could also be uh, one of the best Nick moments in you know 20 years if, if they find a way to get that, get out yep. there. So, um, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you want to see more of our videos, be sure to check out our playlist and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest podcast ventures. Um, links will be in the descriptions. And as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you in our next video.